of this um, nuclear energy and energy section. Uh, we'll have six talks. Our first speaker is uh, Kam Puso, and he will talk about the structural revolution in materials with one-dimensional nanomaterials. Uh, thanks, Chairman. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Kang Pyo. I'm a postdoctor uh, in the uh, Department of Nuclear Science at MIT. Uh, my title today is The Structural Revolution in Material with uh, One-Dimensional Nanomaterial. For, before I move to the, my slide, I, I, I'd like to acknowledge to uh, uh, Professor Yi, Professor Julie, uh, Professor uh, Short uh, as my PI, and Professor Kushima, and Professor Pang Yi for the characterization and also simulation. And uh, I got the funding support from uh, National Sound, uh, Science Foundation, National Research Foundation of Korea, Institute for Basic Science in Korea. So uh, what uh, I'm going to cover today is that uh, basically uh, related to the uh, material issue. So uh, material is very uh, critical for all the society, especially regarding to the energy. It covers uh, energy. Uh, generation sector and energy saving sector, energy transportation, all those sectors. And their property is very critical. But the property, they have a strong relationship with the microstructure. So I'm going to uh, bring uh, nano engineering, and then using this nano engineering, I'm going to expand the design uh, parameter of the uh, microstructure and property. So uh, I'm going to fill up the uh, logic gap uh, in this statement. So uh, one dimensional carbon nanotube resists yield strength, yield, yielding of the metal. Then what does that mean? Basically, one the carbon nanotube is structure, and then I'm going to introduce the, the new, new structure, means like a intragranular dispersion of the carbon nanotube in metal. This is the, uh, this is the uh, new structure uh, which ne never reported so far. Then with this structure, I, I'm going to show what, what is the uh, act. Basically, resist means act. So uh, in order to demonstrate this act, I uh, incorporate the uh, in-situ nanoscale observation so that uh, this uh, nanoscale, nanoscale carbon nanotube, how they make an interaction with the defect in the metal. Defect uh, means, uh, there are many defects in the metal. It can be dislocation, it can be interstitial, or it can be, uh, 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 it can be uh, some sort of crack, those kind of things. I'm going to uh, show this one. And next, basically this, uh, this yielding of metal is related to properties. Yielding, basically deformation. Deformation can come from all those sources. Uh, it can be from uh, diffusion of the uh, latex, also it can be, uh, uh, it can be the dislocation movement. So. I'm going to talk about their properties, like a mechanical response and a radiation damage tolerance, especially. Then, uh, the, the, before I move to uh, the, my real talk, I want to show one of the diagram. This is the conventional uh, 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 material design diagram, it's so called uh, Ashby plot. Uh, this part is the yield strength, and this part is the density. So, I think this is a sort of a familiar uh, photo. So if, typically, if density is lower, then the strength is lower. And when density goes higher, then strength goes higher. So uh, depending on the density and strength, there are special boundary. This is the natural material and polymer and this metal. And metal has this boundary. Inside the metal, there are many, many uh, sort of groups, aluminum and nickel and copper, uh, iron. And what we can see, depending on their uh, like manufacturing process, means their uh, engineering process, Metal, uh, their properties can be different, even if uh, the same uh, density. So using this diagram, we designed the material and then we designed the application. The thing is that uh, the question is, is this boundary sort of intrinsic factor or not? That's the uh, kind, of, uh, kind of questions. The, the answer is not. There is another we call the theoretical limit. That means material properties can be enhanced to at least theoretical limit, which means there is huge gap, like at least one order or two order. So if we control the structure better, that means we can fill this gap. So now there is a reason why we cannot uh, fill this gap, because our uh, uh, manufacturing, the engineering method is kind of limited. So 
there is a, a limited factor to control the microstructure, hence the uh, property is limited. But if we use the nanoengineering technology and incorporation of the uh, carbon nanotube, then we can enhance the uh, properties even more. So I'm going to explain those kind of things. What the uh, nanoengineering means? So this, uh, we published one paper in 2018. Uh, what it indicates that you can see this is a more like a, a liquid surface. But in fact, this is not the liquid surface. This is the uh, metal surface. In metal surface in nanoscale, because of the atomic diffusion, is much faster. So it uh, acts as like a, a liquid. And using this liquid-like behavior at the nanoscale, we can incorporate the carbon nanotube inside the metal. And this is the one of the microstructure of the aluminum. Uh, we can see the uh, beautiful grain boundary in here. And all these are grain boundary. From this view, we cannot say that what is, the, what is the special for this microstructure. However, if we point out this one, it looks like some dot, some defect. When we, have a, we measure the high magnification of the uh, TEM, we can see there is the carbon nanotube. And then we can see the latex uh, fringe here. The important thing in this microstructure is that uh, the carbon nanotube in here is not seen in the boundary. It is seen inside the grain. That means carbon nanotube can interact with all sort of defect. So uh, I have a beautiful video how this carbon nanotube can in make interaction with the, uh, uh, with the defect. So uh, we uh, designed the, uh, new, uh, one experiment using TEM because carbon nanotube is so small, so we cannot use some classical calculation tool. So, uh, so uh, this is the uh, this is the sample uh, system design that uh, we put car carbon nanotube aluminum composite in here, and then I'm going to pour out. And what we can see here, so basically this is the carbon nanotube embedded uh, aluminum matrix, and uh, we can see uh, material is slowly deform, and as we deform more, we can see here actually this part has a carbon nanotube in here, and then this part has a dislocation. If we pull more, then basically this dislocation, you can focus here, started to move, and then slowly moving toward to carbon nanotube, and carbon nanotube at the end just pin down the dislocation. So dislocation cannot uh, move furthermore because of the carbon nanotube. And another thing, as we uh, pull more, we can see the notch at the surface. So uh, this is the uh, this is the basically a nanoscale phenomena. So this notch uh, continuously evolve as we pulled out, and then uh, it continuously propagating. So I would call uh, this is the rupturing process. This is uh, as this is nanoscale, and we can see uh, at this tip uh, because of, uh, because of the uh, uh, curvature, there's stress concentration. So uh, as stress localized here, it as we pulled out the uh, this uh, this uh, the notch continuously propagating. But the interesting thing, the, uh, if we uh, carefully then, here there's also another uh, carbon nanotube closed zone. So uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, notch tip continuously propagating toward carbon nanotube. Then what is going to be happen uh, at the, at the uh, carbon nanotube? Basically, uh, in front of a notch tip, there's high stress concentration. At the same time, there's strain. That means there's much dislocation is boosting. And carbon nanotube is kind of arresting all the dislocation so that, uh, so that uh, the, uh, the, this part become uh, harder and harder. So eventually, at the end, this tip, uh, This tip, uh, the movement is slow, and then uh, it uh, become uh, blunt. So that uh, because of the bluntness, the uh, stress uh, concentration is reduced. So uh, then, what will happen if we pull down more and more? Basically, this uh, this uh, tip, the notch tip, kind of inactivated, and then as we pull down more, uh, the surface try to find more soft area, and then. Uh, there, there is a, another notch tip uh, developed. So we can see, focus this part. Basically, carbon nanotube cluster is here. There's another notch tip developed. 
So first notch tip just stop, and then second notch tip develop, and uh, this notch tip uh, continuously propagating uh, more and more. So if we uh, zoomed out in the uh, little bit uh, like low magnification uh, scale, then what actually we can see here, this is carbon, uh, sorry, this is carbon nanotube uh, close zone, and then we can see the uh, first uh, uh, rupturing uh, becomes second rupturing, and then there is also another rupturing. That means between these, uh, the the rupture uh, rupturing process, the notch tip split into two. So uh, the carbon nanotube stop is split into two. So uh, we can see two uh, kind of uh, second second rupture uh, rupturing, and then one of the one of the uh, rupturing eventually uh, uh, connected to the fracture. So uh, this is the happening at the, uh, at the nanoscale, then uh, what, what would be the uh, implication uh, in the bulk scale? So we, uh, we did uh, uh, some of simulation here that carbon nanotube just continuously block the uh, dislocation, but it never, never break down. It, uh, even though dislocation come several times, it never break down. So even if carbon nanotube from the elastic formation, and what we measure uh, is in the bulk uh, sample, we measure hardness and then convert into the yield strength. And we can see the yield strength originally here, but as we put the m more carbon nanotube, it reached to the uh, mild steel, and then it reached to the carbon steel, and then eventually it reached to the tool steel. So aluminum, if we just uh, suppress the uh, dislocation motion by adding carbon nanotube, then the strength, uh, can go higher than beyond the conventional uh, alloy. At the same time, uh, we can uh, see the, uh, this uh, rupturing process. This is the uh, rupture, rupture tip length. Uh, as we pulled out the sample, rupture tip length goes higher and higher, uh, I mean, like longer and longer. And then eventually, typically, it uh, developed to the crack, as we, uh, we can see in the continuum mechanics and also uh, eventually it moved to the uh, f fracture. That's the typical situation. But as, as because of carbon nanotube pin down this uh, rupture propagation, it uh, split into two second rupture and third rupture. And if we're thinking about the bulk scale, then this, this kind of pro process is multiplied more and more. So when we see the uh, stress strain curve, and uh, we can see elastic region and then uniform deformation and non-uniform deformation. Of course, because of the pinning effect, the strength, uh, yield strength and then tensile strength goes higher. And because of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, crack tip uh, arresting, actually adding carbon nanotube, we can see this non-uniform uh, deformation uh, extend more and more. Uh, as a, uh, because of that, the, the uh, fracture strain goes higher. That's the, I think this is the uh, 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 new phenomena uh, by adding carbon nanotube uh, because uh, typically just zero dot precipitation uh, cannot uh, have this kind of phenomena. And uh, because this, uh, this, this phenomena, uh, what we can see is that uh, aluminum, car aluminum composite originally, uh, aluminum alloy originally sit in here, but uh, we can bring these properties to the somewhere in the uh, theoretical limit. This is one of the examples. I'm not saying only, only aluminum, but also all of the metal is uh, increased. I have demonstrated. And on, another, uh, another thing is the carbon nanotube uh, inside the grain not only make an interaction with the dislocation or something, but also point defect like uh, interstitial and vacancy. And we did uh, uh, in situ TM, and what it, it said that we, we during TM measurement we uh, do uh, ion uh, irradiation. So what we can see, this is carbon nanotube, and then there's the black dot. It's the all sort of the defect cluster. And as we do irradiation more and more, this defect cluster you can see moving toward carbon nanotube. So carbon nanotube kind of absorb all uh, sort of defect, so that uh, basically it minimizes the uh, radiation damage. And also, uh, not only just radi uh, interstitial vacancy, but also uh, uh, like a, a helium uh, sort of fission byproduct, it can, uh, carbon nanotube can accommodate. So uh, one of the example, this is the uh, aluminum uh, TM, uh, uh, TM image after the 
uh, heavy, uh, uh, severe uh, helium ion irradiation, we can see huge void swelling, and then we can see cracks. But if we add a carbon nanotube, then void swelling is much uh, smaller than the one without carbon nanotube. So we assume that carbon nanotube absorb all the helium and then outgassing because of this uh, percolating network. So that means in terms of volume swelling, at least carbon nanotube can be uh, 20, can make a 20 times uh, smaller. So, uh, so uh, the, the effect of carbon nanotube uh, regarding to the uh, radiation damage, basically carbon nanotube can boost the recombination and also it can outgas the helium and carbon atom, uh, they have a strong, uh, strong binding energy, something like 7.4 electron volt per atom. So even if they knocked out because of irradiation, they reconstructed. And also, even they formed sort of carbide, then uh, carbide is still nanostructure. So they can provide interface. This is the how we can enhance their uh, radiation uh, resistance. But all, all, all the uh, uh, region is because of structure. Carbon nanotube has an intragranular structure. So the uh, research basically uh, started from the in situ nano uh, characterization, and then we optimize the structure. And uh, because of this new structure, we can get the new properties. So eventually, uh, we can uh, move to the uh, special application. So uh, what the uh, nano engineering uh, one this person can uh, do? Basically, nano engineering enable new uh, paradigm for the creating novel structure and high performance material. So in terms of structure. Uh, carbon nanotube can, uh, we can make an intergranular dispersion, which is very uh, effective to enhance the mechanical and radiation properties. So uh, we observed in situ nanoscale to demonstrate this uh, phenomena. Uh, strange effect is that uh, carbon nanotube act like uh, first dislocation, except they are not uh, mobile and cannot underline each other. Okay. And also, uh, in terms of the fracture mechanism, uh, mechanism carbon nanotube can efficiently block and uh, plug the uh, uh, crack and rupture tip uh, propagation. And also uh, uh, in radiation, uh, uh, we can see dynamic evolution and convergent diffusion of the radiation, radiation induced defect to the CNT. So uh, this is my last slide. Uh, thanks for uh, your attention. Your slide indicates that uh, the strength of your steel actually increase by addition of uh, nanotube. And I think that your, your slide indicates that uh, 20 to 40 volume percentage is that? Oh, that this high? Is... Yeah, one of the Oh, yes. This one. Yeah, say 40 volume percent. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. So your density actually will increase. Exactly. Yeah. That's huge. So uh, basically, uh, the, the this nano engineering uh, enable the new synthesis technology. So previously there is a, a limitation of solubility. Uh, like if we put uh, more than solubility limit, then there's un, un, unwanted phase precipitation. But uh, in, in this case, we don't have any uh, such a solubility limit. So as long as we want, then we can put the, uh, the carbon nanotube even up to 50 volume percent. Just imagine solubility Iron actually can be so become I'm wondering how stable actually those nanotubes is actually at high temperature in molten. This is molten phase, right? Again, of course, now it's not, but when you add it, it's in molten phase, right? Good question. No, this is not molten phase. So, the, uh, so uh, okay, let, let me just explain. Before you add it, then it's not molten phase. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we have to make a, uh, in nanoscale, the uh, surface atom is very uh, fast. Diffusion is very fast, right? So if we create nanoparticle without any oxide layer, then because of the surface diffusion, they act as like liquid even at low temperature. That's the key. I think I, I, I really confused. How do you add 40% of energy to the matrix of iron? This is uh, aluminum. This is not uh, iron. This is the oh, sorry. Okay. This is aluminum. But I think the principle is same. Uh, just imagine that uh, we have a uh, 10 nanometer of the metal particle, and without surface oxide layer, metal particle, they uh, the surface fraction is really large. So if we close two metal particle, 
together, then they become one uh, particle because of surface diffusion, sort of welding. Right? Thank you. Uh, I think we'll have to move on unless I can speak here. <laughs>